Palpating and treating levator scapula. Levator scapula is a very common muscle to become adhesed or hypertonic. As we've developed our skill set in feeling adhesion, we're finding that it is less adhesed and more hypertonic. Still, we really want to check it. If somebody is having disc issues in their neck, if, you ha if the muscle has adhesion, removing the adhesion is going to just feel like a breath of fresh air to somebody after helping the levator scapula, helping the, the disc pain in their neck. So first we want to landmark it. So to landmark it, come on over here, Robert. The root of the spine of the scapula, the superior edge of the scapula, levator scap attaches in between here. Then if you put your fingers right on those portions, you can see where levator scapula ends right here on the anterior portion and ends right here. So then I'm just going to trace it up, which I've already drawn the lines of where it lives all the way up to about his hairline. We're usually not going to palpate it up higher that way. So these are the borders of where levator scapula lives. Then to palpate it, you can palpate it just like this and do compressive palpation, see if there's any well done steak. Just make note that the upper trap lives here and if you feel any knots, which is very common, they will go in this direction and so you just want to rub over them and just say, okay, I'm not treating that, I'm avoiding that spot. You can also have them put their neck in flexion and lateral flexion and then pull it tight and see if any adhesion or knots become more easily palpatable in this position. So this is, you're just looking for decreased compressibility of the tissue, if it feels like a well done steak or if you feel any knots in that tissue. You also want to take note if there's any hypertonicity, spinal accessory nerve comes out of the SEM. I already drew it, goes down over levator scap deep to the upper trap. And also the dorsal scapular nerve comes out of middle scalene and comes right in front of levator scapula before diving down medial and deep to the scapula this way. That will usually be entrapped in this area. Spinal session nerve could be entrapped here or a little bit down the back, that upper back that way. So just be mindful that these tissues live here because they will be involved when people have chronic neck issues. So that's palpating and treating it. Come on over here, Robert. So first, my positioning. My feet are going to be about shoulder width. I'm in an athletic stance. My knees are slightly bent. I'm going to put a pisiform over thumb position. So I'm going to put my thumb right in the crux of the neck. And then to take my depth, elbows isometric, I'm sinking in with my sternum. Notice that my sternum is sinking in and coming out. Make sure that your elbows are isometric so that you don't bleed force with your elbows bending. And I'm going P to A, L to M, and S to I. And then from there, when I take my tension, I'm in levator scap, I'm going to sink my butt down and back. So I'm going to exaggerate it. So my depth is this, my tension is this. Notice when I take my tension down and back, my fingers are going down and back as well. So I'm taking my depth. I'm noticing I'm going through a little bit of upper trap. Once I get through upper trap, I can feel the density change in the muscle and the stake. That's levator. Then from here, I'm going to sink my butt down and back. That's it. Very short tension set. Go ahead, Greg. Greg is flexing his head. When he gets all the way down, he's laterally flexing away. Good. So come on over here, Robert. Let's just get close in here. So if this is levator scap, I'm usually picking about this position. Sometimes it'll be lower this way. Take my thumb like this. My fingers are draped over the front of his chest and neck. Pies are formed over my thumbnail. I'm just floating on the skin like a feather. I take my depth going straight in at a 45 degree angle to his neck. Past upper trap, there's a density change, that's levator scap. Then once I'm in levator scap, I'm going to shoot my butt down and back. There's my tension set, that's it. Go ahead, Greg. And now I'm maintaining my lats stay engaged, my butt is still going down and back, and I'm aiming my tension down towards the root of his spine of his scapula. Good. So my tension's going down this way. I'm maintaining this way. If I don't maintain my lats or my butt going down and back, my finger's going to move up in that way. I forgot to mention with the CA, Greg, can you get the position? One hand is on his EOP. Can you get closer this way? And one hand is under his chin, and he's just creating some traction force, like two pounds of pressure up. This unloads the cervical spine and just makes it easier to treat. 
And then the, the CA is going to bring him into flexion. He puts one hand on his head when after the traction, and then he's going to laterally flex away. Good. So this is palpating and treating levator scapula. Just be note of what you're feeling, as always. Which of the nerves live in that area? Is it adhesive? Is it hypertonic? Are you feeling slide and a ramp up in tension in order to know that you're treating adhesion? This is a good place to use acoustic pressure wave. So you can put them at end range, flexion, lateral flexion away, and zap away. But just make sure that you're palpating before and after and practice getting your hands on work because we want to develop mastery and we need to continue to feel.